welcome back to Live from the Jam Jar on ADU TV for the third week running. As you will know, ADU stands for Adventures in Digital Utopia and man, it really does feel like a utopia to be here in the studio, being able to bring performers together after such a long time in hiding during lockdown and to be able to bring that joy to you out there is feeling pretty special. So massive thanks to the Jam Jar for helping to make this all possible within the difficult constraints of lockdown. So as you are coming to expect, we have got some incredible acts lined up for you. Music, spoken word, animation, and much, much more. So those of you who've tuned in to us before will know how it all works. We are a completely not-for-profit platform and we've set up to promote the arts in these really challenging times. And so we're asking for donations to raise money, not only for the artists who are gonna be performing here today and for the production team, all the people behind the cameras, but also for four amazing beneficiaries who are doing unbelievable work to support the music industry across the globe. You can find out about those charities on our website and there you will also see the donation button. So hit it if you can, if you want to, please do. But now on with the show and our first act is set up and raring to go over in the studio. They are a neo-impressionist quartet. Sound extraordinary? They really are. So check them out. It's Spindle Ensemble.
ladies and gentlemen, spindle ensemble. Who, I mean, to be honest, until today, I had absolutely no idea what impressionist, neo-impressionist music was, but it turns out I'm a massive fan. I feel like we've all been on a crazy cinematic journey here in the studio. So all those pieces were from Spindle Ensemble's up and coming second album. They don't know when it's going to be coming out yet, but it is coming. And you can find out about all their comings and goings on spindleensemble.com. So please do check them out. Thank you so much for coming in, guys. So next up, we have got a piece of spoken word from the phenomenon that is Steve Pottinger. Now, this man masquerades to many as just one of the coolest and most proficient stage managers out there. He is, in fact, also a man of words, of wisdom and dry Wolverhampton wit. We were hoping to have the man in person today, but he's been called out to do some food deliveries in his community because that's the kind of lovely guy that he is. So he's promised to come and see us in person another time. But for now, he has sent us a pre-lockdown recording of a rather poignant poem written in response to a question posed to him. What would you say at England's funeral? Here it is, his poem, England. Right off the bat, let me say, I was never a fan. And all that, but if we're clearing the decks, wiping the slate clean, getting it all out in the open, then you were bloody hard work, England. Not easy to live with, let alone love. You see, you kept making me and my mates at cricket tests we were never going to pass. Took our taxes and our labour, but still left us feeling second class because our roots stretched back to other cultures, other shores, and other secret hearts. Beat a little faster. Race a little more. Even now, it's like you can't help yourself. Some scoundrel starts waving the flag. Next thing you know, you've tanked yourself up on bigotry and lager, giving it two world wars and one world cup. Like you fired the winning shot yourself. I mean... Really, England? Really? I've seen you running for the bus in the morning. It's not pretty, you're a heart attack waiting to happen. Clogged arteries, hypertension, dodgy knees, all that's history. For God's sake, let it go. And you were the <coughs> chink of fine china, the tyranny of manners and the old school tie, tutting about the enemy within, turning a blind eye while someone did your dirty work. Gratuitous truncheons, battles in beanfields, cover-ups and never-challenged lies. So, like I say, wasn't the best of starts. I had to leave to learn to love you. Get far enough away to see both sides of the coins in your pocket full of shrapnel. Find the fist that offered love, not just the one that promised hate. And out there... On the other side of the world, I found, I missed you. Missed your dirt under my fingernails. Hankered after your way with words, your dirty laugh, your seaside postcard humour, and your beautiful mongrel language. Every time you open your mouth, history tumbles out in dialect and accent, a pulsing archaeology of trade, invasion, conquest, immigration, the ebb and flow of populations, making room, making homes and getting assimilated. Learning. There's precious fewer life's problems not cut down to size with another cup of tea and a couple of pickies. You're not dead. You're just evolving. Reinventing yourself, getting your nails done, putting on your glad rags for a night out on the town, and I'll find you on top of the moors quoting Benny Hill and Shakespeare, feasting on some Moses and flagons of cider, slapping the taut drum of your stomach where it spills over the waistband of your trousers. Oh, play it for, kid! Proud as punch, full staff as I live and breathe. And you'll be paddling in the shallows, beyond the deck chairs and the donkeys, giggling. 
in Gujarati, the Hemiasari trailing in the cold North Sea, salty and wet, while your wide-eyed kids play shoot 'em up in the arcades, my dear for fish and chips, support City and United, and ride the bus home, their head full of dreams, their hearts proud and strong, knowing love triumphs over cricket tests every single time. Thank you to the legendary Steve Pottinger. Oh, the distant memory of sitting in a pub with a pint. I can just about remember it. If that floated your boat, you can check out the cornucopia of delight Steve has on offer on his exceedingly friendly website. He has just, in fact, launched his sixth book, I believe, a collection of poems in celebration and defiance in these politically turbulent times. So grab yourself a copy and check out the links to all his goings on on our website. So now it is time to delve once again into the wonderfully bizarre mind of Simon Panrucker and his computer. This week it is the ever charming and gloriously talented Kate Stables from This Is The Kit who is having her turn at collaborating with Simon's humanoid machine. For centuries, musicians have travelled the land in search of the ultimate collaborator. Scouring hidden valleys up rivers that stretch for a thousand miles, traversing barren deserts and desolate moorlands in hope of a single glimpse of a clue that may aid them on their quest. If their will is strong enough, if they rise to the challenge, and if they can find it, maybe they too can play with... Hello there. Good, thank you. How are you doing? Yep, why are you excited? Yeah. Well, that's what I was hoping. Two. So yeah, let's give it a go. Are you ready? Ah, uh, yes. Well, my name's Kate, and I s write songs, and I sing them, and, um, and I have a band called This Is The Kit. Yes, please. Very nice. Yeah. I liked him. I liked the middle bit. Yeah. Nice ending as well. It's good to have a good ending. It's something I always struggle with. Yeah, I'm ready. Um, here we go. Not much of a tune between me and you. Not nearly enough room. Why don't we? All the way 
This is all mine. Thank you, Kate, Simon, and Computer. Now, if for some crazy reason that is the first time you have seen Kate perform, I implore you to check out her band, This Is The Kit. I, for one, definitely cannot live without them, so the link's as ever on the website. Now, from one divine female musician to another, we have got the British-based Zimbabwean Shona artist Millicent Chapandra. Millicent plays the traditional Mambira, and if you don't know what that is, you will see it in just a second. She's on, well, it can only be described in one way, a vibrant mission to bring the experience of Zimbabwean women onto the international music stages, and she is most definitely doing just that. Her shows are a true celebration, as you will see, and the music calls on dancing ancestral spirits to rise through the trance of the Mbira's cascading sound. So experience it for yourselves. Here she is, Millicent Chapandra. Tell 
Josepha and in Amana Niterombe, Guya Anna and in Amana Niterombe, Newe Joakim and in Amana Niterombe, Moya Musande and in Amana Niterombe, Masande Vose and in Amana Niterombe, Dota Ketera and in Amana Niterombe, Vedin Zarangu and in Amana Niterombe, Dinota Ketera.
thank you so much. You. Wow. Millicent, Millicent Chapandra. Millicent, do you want to come and have a little sit down and we can have a chat? Um, this is normally the point in the show where our Lal Muttuk introduces people, okay. but he's got a bit of a tickly throat, so he's yeah. staying at home in order to keep us all safe here in okay. the studio. Apparently, he's feeling fine otherwise. Well, these are the times, and uh, we must go with the flow. And I if, know. Yeah, to keep everybody safe. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm secretly excited that I now get to talk to you, <laughs> because especially now, since just seeing you perform, I've got so many questions. That yeah. was completely beautiful i feel like we've all just been transported to another realm and i would so love to know a little bit about the instruments that you've played yeah. but also perhaps a little bit about because obviously we can't understand what well, i can't understand the language that you're singing in yes. so just what what you're singing about mm -hmm. yeah well, what I'm thinking about, first of all, how does it relate to the other? Because as individuals, we hear music differently, isn't it? Um, I could be singing a happy song, but you could be sad and it does something else to you. Or you could be the other way around, totally the opposite, and you could feel something else. But what I was just singing about, uh, on the first instrument, which is the nyunga nyunga, next to you there, yeah. it's a 15-key... You can lift it up, it's all right. Thank you. It's a 15-key um, instrument people. mounted on a wooden board and it's got its own uh, the resonator there and it's called nyunga nyunga. Nyunga Nyunga, what That's a beautiful right. sound. Yes. <laughs> can, I, can I just... You can, you can touch it, yes. <laughs> we, will, we will clean this afterwards in the name of safety. Oh, my goodness. Right. It just feels quite transporting mm. just to make the sound on it. And that's what it's supposed to do. Okay. It's supposed to transport us. It's supposed to connect us with the um, uh, spiritual realm, the ancestral realm, uh, where we communicate with our ancestors. Our ancestors are not scary. They're not some sort of spooky um, spirit, but we've lived with them. They've been here on earth with us. They're our grandmothers, great-grandmothers, great-grandfathers, and so on. And uh, they are in that realm where they can intercede for us. Just like when we pray, we pray through the different saints. So that's exactly the same um, uh, situation, really, same mantra that we use. Um, so I was singing in Shona. That's my vernacular, my language in Zimbabwe. We've mm -hmm. got about 11 languages in Zimbabwe, but Zim Shona is the main language followed by Ndebele and many others. And of course, as you can hear, I'm speaking English. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> You've lived that's, here for a long time I, I, though, haven't you? That's not it. That's not really it. Oh, okay. Because um, we, w the settlers came. The settlers were the British who mm -hmm. came to colonize uh, mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, and that's why we've got we 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 had the British education. I wrote the Cambridge exams as well. Right. So um, yes, it's got its pluses, it's got its own, but that's a subject for a, a different day. Um, and a big one, and a <laughs> very and an big one, one, and a very big and important one that cannot be ignored. No. And uh, we move on to uh, this last instrument that I played, Mbira Zava Zimu. Now, it's got all sorts of things stuck to yes. the outside. Like, it, I can see shells and bottle tops, and that's yeah. what's making the rattling, is that's it? That's what's making the rattling. You've got one outside next to you, which yeah. I played earlier on, if you want to lift Just it. Lift it. Yeah, so that's how the, the mbira is, mounted on a wooden board with the bottle tops. Bottle mm -hmm. tops, because we are a landlocked country in Zimbabwe. <laughs> right, okay. Well, you so, would use shells, yes, would you? So we would use whatever we have. It's all uh, natural material that we, we found what is uh, accessible to us, the wood, the metal, which mm -hmm. is from the ground, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the bottle tops for resonance. We need that vibration, that resonance. It's a very important characteristic of our Mbira music. So what is that vibration doing? What, what? It's, it's, it's talking. It's, it, I'm sure you, when you were listening, it's as if someone else was uh, playing with me. Yes. Like, so, an, like an echo, yes. I, right. I really felt that, actually. That's right. And it's especially, you did, the, you did this wonderful thing at the end of a lot of your pieces where you retreated back yeah. as well, this mm -hmm. kind of diminuendo. Uh -huh. And then I just, it was so evocative of, yeah, spirits. Yeah, and, it feels, and it feels that emptiness, those spaces, those gaps, and uh, uh, they come and communicate with us, of course. Um, the Mbira Zawadzimu, 
which is what I was just going to talk about, yeah. is our tradition. That's a uh, very, very important instrument. There are so many mbiras all over Africa, but we have mbira zawadzimu from 22 to 28, sometimes even more keys on them, mm -hmm. and uh, mounted on a wooden board, which is called uh, mubvavaropa, which means uh, wood that bleeds literally bleeds because when you cut it it seeps out uh, red goo yes that's that's mm. the one yeah and um uh the english well it's not in english anyway it's anglo uh, anglo uh terracopas anglo census that's the name oh okay oh, yeah it's not even english anyway <laughs> there are so many borrowed words but anyway we place the mirror inside this calabash that pumpkin shell that uh for for amplification so it's not to hide it from the audience yeah but uh when we are back in our villages we won't have the technology here mm -hmm. uh, much as we do have technology now but we would use uh natural resources for amplification so that everybody can hear and when we come out here i can pick up some shells because they're easily accessible. It's just um, aesthetics, really. Okay. But more buzzing, more resonance around the instrument. And uh, that's our traditional instrument. And I would love to talk about how accessible this instrument is because when the settlers came, it was demonized. And it was uh, because they didn't understand right. how we pray, how we communicate with with our ancestors, how we, um, how we uh, just live, and and it, what people don't understand tends to cause fear. It, doesn't fear, it? Yeah. that's right, and fear is is very dangerous, mm. and of course. Um, uh, many people were hanged and uh, mm. lynched and, you know, all sorts. But as I said, that's a, to a topic for another day. But we have music and music has always survived from under the underground. As you can see, I'm still playing. I'm trying to yeah. amplify that. Say Mira is... You know, and you're doing incredible work now. You. You've been in the UK. Is it 20 years? Almost 20 years now. now. Yes, that's right. Just about um, 20 years. Yeah. yeah and <laughs> I know that you do great work to promote all of this incredible mm. cultural music, yeah. and and for women particularly. We had a little chat before you played, yes. before we started today, and you were saying that these instruments were a male thing. Is that right? Traditionally played by males. Not necessarily. Uh. That's where the correction, that's where we need to correct uh, these things. So obviously when uh, the British culture was introduced, it's unladylike to do certain things. Okay. As you can see, our sat there, uh, the way our sat, more like a phallic instrument, isn't it? So women <laughs> in their places, men in their places, and of course... Women played, men played, uh, and um, of course we've got these uh, roles that we have within the community, um, which which help with um, a day to day life. But of course, women were pulled away from from the from music making, mm -hmm. and it looked more like a male thing. So hence, women were pushed out, but we've got people like Mbuya um, Stella Chueshe, uh, uh, the late Chuoniso, Mbuya Bula Joko as well, who, who forged on, who stressed on and uh, kept playing the, the, the Mbira instrument just to show that it is still accessible. Women do play and it's okay to play and there's nothing spooky about the Mbira. It's just like any other instrument. It can be played in church at religious ceremonies. It can be played uh, socially. It can be played literally anywhere, just like any other instrument. I know yeah. you've set up a, a platform. Is it called Embira Blues? Yes, that's and right. So is that what you're doing through that platform? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I. I it is a, a platform to just um, come in and relax, let your hair down, enjoy the music, enjoy Mbira. There are free events, by the way, because um, I would like as many people to, to, to attend. I run it in a, in a coffee shop, which is very child friendly uh, hours that are also um, um, what can I what was the word uh, socially acceptable yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes starts early and finishes early so people can bring in their children and it's open for everybody it's, uh, I'm, I'm expecting lots of diverse community to come in and engage and which is what has been happening Brilliant. unfortunately 
right we now, had to stop. It's yes. difficult, but it hopefully difficult. you'll be able to open that up again. Definitely. And if people want to to find out about that, how can they find out about all these incredible things you're doing and get in touch with these amazing instruments? I've got my uh, website, Millicent Chapanda. No pseudo names there. Great, and, easy to uh, find <laughs> Millicent Chapanda. You can find me on uh, social media, again, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Millicent Chapanda. And you can find Mira Blues as well on all the social uh, uh, social media. And also I do, I have got African Fusion, which I've been running uh, uh since I've been in this country. And uh, how I started African Fusion is that when... Um, what, what, is, what is African Fusion? African Fusion, it's, it's an educational uh, 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 group that mm -hmm. I've, uh, I started. I uh, try and I actually, not try, I actually go into educational institutions, mm. prisons, young offenders units, uh, high schools, universities, teaching people, telling people about our culture, demystifying all the, um, uh, you know, unknown, making it, you know, just so that we, we, we get to understand each other as a human race. And that is just so mm. important right now. Yeah, it is. Thank yeah. you for doing all this incredible work. And I hope that people can, can really check out what Millicent is doing. Um, it's so important. It has been such a privileged to have you Thank here today you. you've really taken us to other worlds and it's been lovely hearing all about Thank it you. well that's the beauty of music isn't it isn't yes, it opening up to the other worlds other cultures other religions that's other, it yeah that's it and we the differences we're, appreciating those differences that's what it's all about it brings people together doesn't yeah, it? it and does. that's what we are all about and that's why we're doing this and having this mm. platform because we just really want people to hear lots of different types of yeah. music and it is transporting and it does bring people together Together, and it breaks down boundaries and you're doing that in all your incredible work so you're a, you're a true inspiration oh, so thank you thank, thank you. you i try and do my bit and thank you for this opportunity as well it's been fun in an unusual space and place and i know aren't we lucky to lovely. actually be able to hear some music and, and see some definitely. people all at a distance <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> but we make it work we make it work, We're it work. as long as we respect what's uh, in place exactly That's there are masks all, all <laughs> out there we'll be yes. putting ours on soon Anyway, thank you so much. We're going to be moving on to the next item now. Yep. So you might think that you have seen everything that the four times, is it, world champion DMC, Mr. Switch, can do over the last two weeks. He has brought us breaks. He's brought us hip-hop. Well, this week, he is going to be turning his turntables and flicking his switches reggae style. myself. Yes, you may. Well, my name my is name Mr. Mr. Switch. So, give them a chance, Your Honor. Please, please give them a break. A break.
What's that tune that goes? You got to know it's some dub steppy yeah. dub tune. Thank you, Mr. Switch. What a legend. Now, um, if you aren't acquainted with the other work that this man gets up to, I highly recommend checking out his band Symphonica. It's this enormous stage act and it fuses orchestral music with dance floor destroying beats. And one day we'll be able to fit that many people in one place. But until then, just check them out online. Symphonica, they really are mind blowing. So, ah oh man, we've had such a brilliant time at the Jam Jar once again. Thank you so much to all the brilliant artists who've been here today and thank you for tuning in. We hope that you've enjoyed it just as much as we have. Um, if you haven't donated yet, 
and you would like to, you still can by hitting the donate button on the website. It takes two seconds. We are completely not for profit and it will mean we can bring you more fantastic acts whilst raising all this much needed money for the music industry. So we'll be back again next week with more wonderful acts. But for now, we will leave you with episode three from the animation miniseries Quarantine Daydreams by our dear friends Cal and John over at Trago Studios. So see you next time. <laughs>